Hey guys, all right, another Salmonella video. This one on Joshua Norton, the only United States Emperor. I have no fucking clue what this is about. I have no clue who Joshua Norton is, aside from the fact, well, stating by the title, he is the only United States Emperor. Uh, how did this happen? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> His intro is stuck in my head now. Hey kids, let me ask you, do you watch the news often? Have you attended a school in your life? You yeah. ever look at a dollar? If the answer to yeah. any of these questions is yes, then chances are you're familiar with at least a couple United States presidents. But if you're like me prior to last week, you've probably never heard of a United States emperor. Um, excuse me, good sir, but I should inform you that we're actually living under an emperor as we speak, at least according to my degree from the University of Reddit. Hey, that's great. Whoa, look over there. It's someone criticizing Elon Musk. <gasps> And he's making typos. <laughs> anyway, let me tell you. <laughs> that one got me. That, that one got me. Tell a story about a man named Joshua Norton. Norton was born in England at some point in the 1810s. Very little is known about the guy's younger years, other than the fact that he spent most of his youth in South Africa as part of the UK's colonization programs. Hmm. He came to San Francisco in 1849 with a modest amount of wealth to his name and worked his way up in the real estate and commodities markets to nice. become one of the city's wealthiest citizens. Oh, All shit. was normal in the life of Mr. Norton, until one day when he got a little too big for his britches. You see, in 1852, China was facing a huge famine, so they completely banned the export of rice. Naturally, San Fran's rice price began to skyrocket in response to the reduced supply, peaking at 36 cents per pound. Norton saw Damn. this and decided to buy a $25,000 rice shipment from Peru at 12 cents per pound, thinking he'd corner the market. Keep in mind, that's around $750,000 in today's money. Little did he know, that wasn't the only shipment coming out of Peru, and by the time he was able to sell it, rice was already back down to three cents a pound. Now, according to my calculations, that put Norton at a net loss of a whole frickin' lot. He subsequently <laughs> got into a years-long court battle with the vendor who sold him the shipment, which only cost him more money, and ultimately left the man destitute. So, oh, Norton did what anybody shit. would do after losing everything. He drank a nice hefty dose of fuck it all and said, oh you know God. what? The courts can eat my shorts, the house can eat my blouse, Peru can eat my shoe. I declare myself emperor of these United States, and I'm telling every newspaper in the city about it. And then he did. Now, the papers could have just been like, what a lunatic, and that would have been the end of it. But instead they said, you know what? This guy's kind of a meme. Let's publish his declaration just for gits and shiggles. People across the city had their laughs, and Norton's rise to power began. From here, he issued several more commands to the media, and unlike nowadays, people loved having regular Norton updates shoved in their face. Among these announcements was a decree in eight Whereas a body of men calling themselves the National Congress are now in session in Washington City in violation of our imperial edict of the 12th of October last, declaring the said Congress abolished. 1859 to formally abolish the United States Congress, he also gave out... Me, me, big... No, Mr. Pope and Santa come to... I'm not saying the rest. ...a mandate to both the Protestant the and Roman Catholic churches to formally ordain him as emperor. Although these edicts were ultimately ignored by the powers they were addressed to, they still served to build Norton's reputation around the city. And before long, he was a fully-fledged local celebrity. He was easily <laughs> recognized by passerby, typically sporting a blue naval uniform and a beaver hat with a peacock feather in it. Pretty soon, Norton could expect to receive the royal treatment wherever he went. People started to address him formally on the streets. He got to ride public transport for free, and he even got occasional tax payments from people sympathetic to his impoverished living situation. <laughs> oh, and get this, Norton became so famous that toy stores in the city began selling dolls of the man for kids to play with. How no many way. people can you think of that were so legendary that they got dolls made after them? You got Emperor Norton, Mr. T, and the bear that Teddy Roosevelt decided not to shoot. That's it, really. <laughs> also, though not backed by...
<laughs> actual law in any way, his declarations came to be taken relatively seriously by the populace around him. No For way. example, according to Norton, saying Frisco instead of San Francisco would be punishable by a $25 fine. Talk to any Frisco native and you'll find that this attitude survives to this day. With the help of a local printing firm, Norton even issued his own currency, no. which was actually accepted by many residents of the city, despite having no backing behind it whatsoever. In fact, a few Norton bar Jesus Christ, they just went full in on the meme here in San Fran. God damn. Are still floating around today as highly valued collector's items. I tried doing the same thing a while back, but unfortunately, Onella rubles are still only worth their weight in Onella rubles. Of course, it wasn't all magpies and molasses for our good friend Josh. He was once arrested by a policeman named Armand Barbier, who wanted to throw him in an asylum for his apparent insanity. Needless to say, when the public caught wind of this, they lost their fucking minds. Irate citizens wrote complaints in droves. All the newspapers published scathing editorials towards the police department. No. Stray cats were thrown into wood chippers. I don't have no. any evidence for that last one. I'm just, you know, assuming based on what I would do in this scenario. Anyway, what pretty the soon, fuck, the Sam? chief of police got the memo, and Emperor Norton was released unscathed. Thankfully, Norton issued a royal pardon towards the man who arrested him, and from that point onward, whenever Norton passed a member of the force, they would stop and salute him. So, although in many <laughs> ways he appeared like... godlike, Norton was but a mortal. And, as mortals sometimes do, Emperor Norton decided to drop dead on a street corner on January 8th of 1880. However, he left behind a legacy the likes of which most of us could only dream of. Beyond just the comedic value of his many Third exploits, eye. Norton definitely had his prophetic moments, with some of his orders actually coming true decades after they were given. On multiple occasions, he ordered a bridge to be built between San Francisco and the Oakland Bay Area, which was eventually constructed in the 1930s. He, he is also the prophet. told people to form a League of Nations to uphold international interests. Unfortunately, a man yelling in California wasn't uh... quite enough to convince the leaders of the world that such a thing was necessary. Necessary. But who knows? He is Maybe the prophet. Lord Nordo could have stopped World War One if he had been just a bit louder. I hope this tale has inspired some of you young impressionable kids out there. Not because I expect any of you to succeed in the same way Norton did, but just because it's my personal belief that the world could always use more oddball vagrants. Wait a minute, oddball vagrants? Product placement. Sponsor time. Qu uh, nope, not gonna get me. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Not exactly what I was expecting. Uh, it's kind of expecting one of those like free state kind of things to happen where this dude's like, I declare myself emperor and this right here is my state or something like that. Um, I've got nothing else to add. Uh, <laughs> a weird dude. Weird, weird dude. Indeed, right? Yeah, it's a sponsorship at the end there anyways uh i've got nothing else to add um it was funny not as pun filled as uh castro though not as pun filled but still good sam Monella always does good videos that are also sometimes fucked up but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more leave a suggestion down below for what you want to see me react to next and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you